Welcome to this Tobacco University lecture video. Today I'm going to be going over genotype, chemotype, and phenotype as it relates to the breeding of cannabis. And to go over these three main types and also provide you with some of their advantages and disadvantages of utilizing each. So first off, breeding can be based on three main uh, categories here. Phenotype is basically how the plants look. Chemotype is the chemical profiles that it produces. And genotype are the actual genetics. So again, all of these are different strategies for breeding. So first off, we look at phenotype, and this is how the plant grows. This is a result of how the genetics interact with the environment. So if a plant has the genetics to grow 10 feet tall, but it's constantly under water or salt stress, the plant may only grow to be three feet tall. As a result, the phenotype would be three feet, even though the genetics are different in the sense that the genetics could produce 10 feet tall plants because the environment, it may only reach three feet tall. So what's the advantages to using phenotype selection for, which is often used by growers? Well, it's often used because there's no specialized equipment needed. Growers can judge plants purely on the performance for their given environment. If they keep the environment consistent, that can allow uh, different grow-to-grow -grow comparisons. Attentive growers can select one individual out of many, uh, so that is another advantage. If something is a genetic uh, standout in its look, then that could be those genetics could be preserved and maybe cloned and maybe carried out going further and bred in future lineages. How are the disadvantages of using phenotype selection is that resulting plants, even if it's a clone, may not be the same. It's based only on the morphological characteristics. This can also require an attentive grower, typically growing many plants. If a grower is only growing a small number of plants, that can be more difficult to go through the process of phenotype selection. So then that brings us to chemotype, which is referring to the chemicals produced by the plant. We have type 1, which is a high THC a production plant. They have type 2, which is a balance ratio of CBD to THC, and then type 3 is a high CBD production plant. Now there's others that go further and look at um, type 4 being CBG dominant, and type 5 being zero cannabid uh, cannabinoids, uh, reduced number there, in the sense that those are looking more at potentially just producing terpenes and that the cannabinoids. Now the advantages to using this chemotype of breeding uh, is that you can know the classification of the cannabinoid production in that plant. Ideally, it shows the uh, plants not producing the needed compounds uh, to not be grown, so that's a way to select those. And can speed up the selection process, or especially early on in a breeding program, as far as kind of eliminating those that are going to be a waste of time for the grower's desired traits. But the disadvantages with using a uh, chemotype is that typically this requires specialized equipment. Um, high resolution mass spec um, is a kind of high end piece of equipment that might be needed to really assess the chemical profile. Plants uh, may change classification based on generations of the breeding process if growers are selecting for one thing or another. It's based on what the plant actually produces, which can be influenced by many environmental factors. So it's just another downfall to consider if you're using chemotype breeding. Then that leads us to genotype breeding. Well, traits such as photoperiod dependence and cannabinoids produced can be strongly influenced by the genotype of the plant. So this is why using the genes can be a very important and powerful tool. The advantages to using genotype breeding is that it's very specific to the actual genetic code. It allows for quick and efficient screening for targeted sequences and can be performed at any stage of the plant growth cycle, meaning the genetics of that plant at the seedling stage as well at the end ideally will be just about the same. So therefore, you're going to be able to speed up the breeding process instead of growing a plant all the way to term, you could grow a bunch of seedlings. Uh, screen them for their genetics, and then select out those that don't have the particular sequences deemed desirable by the grower. However, there are also some disadvantages. And the disadvantage of using uh, genotype for breeding is that it can require specialized equipment, can also be expensive. Some, co some companies are offering genetic testing for a fee. Other companies are going through doing it in-house with a lot of upfront cost. You also, with genotype breeding, you need to know what you're specifically looking for. So you may be able to find the whole genetic sequence or find certain targeted sequences, but you may need a way of detecting or knowing what particular sequences you're actually looking for. So with that, this is just a comparison here. How will you base your breeding strategy on phenotype, chemotype, or genotype? Each had its own pros and cons, and you can find videos on this channel about each of these in more detail. So if you want to explore any of them further, continue to search on this channel, and I'm sure you will find some more information to allow you to have the best breeding strategy going forward.